Hello, I'm Tom Anahumi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'll be showing the Dell EMC Parstore CSI Driver 1.3 features and installation method for OpenShift using the Dell operator. As part of this release, we've updated the CSI protocol to version 1.2 and added support for Kubernetes 1.20, OpenShift 4.7 with both RHEL and Red Hat Core OS worker nodes as well as support for RHEL 8 and CentOS 8. The first step is installing the driver. In the latest version, CSI 1.2, we've added support for OpenShift 4.6 and 4.5 with RHEL and CoreOS worker nodes. The CSI driver can be installed using Helm and using the Dell CSI operator. In order to automate and simplify the CSI driver installations on OpenShift clusters, we've developed the Dell CSI operator. This is a Kubernetes native application, which helps in installing and managing the CSI drivers provided by Dell EMC for its various storage platforms. As you can see, my OpenShift cluster is running version 4.6, which is based on Kubernetes 1.19. There are no parse or storage classes or persistent volume claims yet. In order to start the installation of the operator, all you need to do is navigate to the operator's hub, search for it, and click on install. The process takes a few seconds to complete. Once done, we can install each and every one of the Dell CSI drivers directly from the OpenShift UI. The operator is fully certified and supported by Red Hat. Before installing the CSI driver, we need to create a secret with the Parstore credentials in the same namespace of the driver. In case we are using CHAP authentication, we need to provide CHAP credentials as well. From the installed operators tab, I'm clicking on the Dell CSI operator and then I'm navigating to the CSI Power Store tab and selecting Create CSI Power Store. I'm specifying the driver name and clicking on the YAML view to provide the array details. First of all, I'm specifying the namespace that the driver will be installed in. Version 1.2 adds support for CHAP for iSCSI protocol. The driver uses a provided job secret to configure the iSCSI node database on each node with iSCSI access. Parstore endpoint defines the IP address of the Parstore cluster. Kubernetes cluster prefix defines a prefix that is appended onto all resources created in the array. It is a unique per Kubernetes or CSI deployment. The protocol defines what transport protocol to use. It can be iSCSI, FC, or Auto for automatic detection. Next, we have the snapshot class. This object will be used to create snapshot volumes on the array. A storage class provides a way for administrators to describe the classes of storage they offer. The default storage class called ParStore and it uses ext4 file system. In addition, we have an XFS storage class and NFS storage class that provides read-write-many volume capability. Starting from version 1.2, the Parstore CSI driver supports topology-aware volume, which helps Kubernetes scheduler to place persistent volume claims on worker nodes which have access to the backend storage. It provides an efficient way to provision applications only on nodes which have access to the Parstore array. In case we have nodes that are not connected to the array, such as infra nodes. Now, we are ready to install the driver. I'm clicking Create to continue. Within a few seconds, the driver is up and running. By navigating to the Deployments tab, we can see the Parastore controller, which consists of two pods. Starting from version 1.2, 
the parsed or CSI driver supports running multiple replicas of the controller pod. At any time, only one controller pod is active, as known as leader, and the rest are standby. In case of a failure, one of the standby pods becomes active and takes the position of the leader. By navigating to the storage tab, we can see that the three storage classes have been created, and in addition, we have the snapshot class, which is used to manage array-based snapshots. As part of the driver installation, it automatically detects the iSCSI initiators and register the OpenShift worker as new hosts on the parser array. With that, let's start to discover the CSI features. I'm navigating to the stateful set tab and creating a new tree replica Nginx stateful set. I'm providing the name and the namespace and specifying the storage class and the requested persistent volume claim size. Within a few seconds, the Nginx pods are up and running, connected to their persistent volumes, which have been created on the parser array and mapped to the OpenShift workers by the CSI driver. Starting from version 1.2, the parser CSI driver supports expansion of persistent volumes. This expansion is done online, that is, when the PVC is attached to any node. In order to expand the volume, we need to edit the persistent volume claim using the kubectl command and change the volume size and then save the file. As you can see, the volume size has changed in the background as well as the persistent volume claim object, while the volume is thin mounted on the running pod. Next, I'm going to create a snapshot of that PVC. I'm navigating to the persistent volume claim in OpenShift UI and clicking on Create Snapshot. Then, I'm selecting the storage class and clicking Create. Once the volume snapshot has been successfully created by the CSI parser driver, a volume snapshot content is automatically created. Once the status of the volume snapshot object has the ready to use field set to true, it is available to use. By navigating to the storage tab in the parser UI and clicking on the volume, we can see that a new native snapshot has been created in Parstore. Next, I'm clicking on the snapshots I've just created and selecting restore as a new PVC. I'm providing a name, storage class, and size, and then clicking Create. Within a few seconds, a new writable volume has been created from that snapshot. We can confirm this by going to the Parser UI as well. One of the new CSI features is the ability to clone a persistent volume claim from another persistent volume claim as a source. I'm clicking on Clone PVC and then selecting the name and the size. Within a few seconds, a new writable volume has been created from that volume. We can confirm this from Parser UI as well. Starting from version 1.2, the Parser CSI driver supports raw block volumes. Raw block volumes are presented as block devices to the pod by using a bind mount to a block device in the node's file system. There are some specialized applications that require direct access to a block device because, for example, the file system layer introduces unneeded overhead. The most common case is databases, which prefer to organize their data directly on their underlying storage. In this example, I'm creating a new persistent volume claim called block PVC. The volume type is set to block. In addition, I'm creating a new pod. The raw block device will be mapped as slash dev slash xvda once the pod is up and running. I'm creating it using the OpenShift UI and waiting for the pod to start. 
By navigating to the OpenShift UI and selecting the new pod I've just created, we can open a terminal to the pod and verify that the new device is mapped to the pod as raw device. The last feature is Read Write Many Volume. This capability allows us to create shared volume on parser NFS shares. Shared volumes are useful when you want multiple pods to access the same PVC at the same time. They can use the same volume even if they're running on different hosts. First of all, let's create a new persistent volume claim. I'm selecting the NFS storage class, which is set to allocate Kubernetes volumes as NFS exports instead of block volumes. I'm providing a size and a name and setting the access mode to shared access. By going to the events tab, we can see that the status is still pending. This is due to the topology feature, which is set to true on this storage class by default. The volume will be created once a new pod with a claim will be scheduled. I'm navigating to the pods tab and creating a new pod with the claim of this shared PVC. As you can see now, the volume has been created and mounted on the pod. By going to the parser UI and navigating to the NAS servers, we can see that it's running on node B. If I click on the file system tab, I can see that my NFS volume has been created and that the worker node running this pod has root access on this volume. Now, I'm navigating to the pods I've just deployed and creating a new file on the NFS share. Next, I'm creating a new pod, pod2, which has a claim of the same persistent volume. As you can see, the same volume is now attached to the pod. I'm opening a terminal to the second pod and navigating to the shared NFS export. As you can see, it is mounted and I can access the file I created from pod 1 and edit it. Parse or C side driver version 1.3 adds support for managing multiple parse arrays from a single driver instance. This feature is enabled by default and integrated to even single instance installations. Storage classes won't be generated during the installation, and they need to be created and populated with the array's details. Multi-array feature is backward compatible, meaning that you can use version 1.3 of the driver with existing volumes. Please note that the installation process has been changed due to the multi-array support so please refer to the documentation for detailed instructions. For the purpose of this example, I installed the CSI driver and specified the two parsed arrays in the config file. As you can see, I created two storage classes, one for each storage array. Each storage class has a unique name and under the array IP, I specified the parser cluster IP. Now, I'm about to create a new stateful set with two kinds of pods. The first one has a claim of 40 gig PVC from array D0782, and the second pod has a claim of 10 gig PVC from array D0517. I'm creating the application using the OC command and waiting for the pods to start. During the process, the driver is creating the volumes in each of the parser arrays, mapping them to the OpenShift worker nodes, formatting them with file system, and mounting them on the pod. As you can see, the master volumes have been created on the first parser array, and the worker volumes have been created on the second parser array. By navigating to the parser UI, we can see that each volume group has been created and mapped to the relevant Kubernetes nodes. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.